Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I Don't Work Here Lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled, I Work at GameStop, This is a McDonald's. So last holiday season, when I still worked for good old GameStop, there was a McDonald's a block away that I decided to go to for my lunch break. We don't have a uniform per se, we just have to wear either a nice shirt or one that we sell and some nice pants with our name tag on. I'm standing in line after ordering my food, and this kid and his mom are standing a couple feet away from me, and I hear the following. Mom, it's okay, she works there, she'll be able to tell you. Kid, yeah mom, but she looks like she's on her break. Mom, oh it doesn't matter, ask her, so we don't have to waste a trip. I kind of roll my eyes, but turn to the kid when he walks over and ask him what's up. He then asks me if my store had some random, obscure PS3 game in stock. I kind of smiled, shrugged and said I had no idea, you'd have to call and ask or go up there and check. The mom gets really huffy when she hears that and is like um, we don't want to waste all that time if you don't have it, so if you could just look it up on your phone that'd be great. At this point my food is ready so I grab it and just shake my head at the lady. Sorry, but I'd have to be at a computer to do that. Listen I have to go, I only have 10 minutes left of my break and I haven't eaten yet. Just call the store and they can check for you. I just kind of book it out of there and go back to the store and eat. A little bit later the pair comes into the store and the lady tries to report me to my manager for refusing to help her at McDonald's. My manager just laughs at her and says I wasn't on the clock or even in the store, so she can't help her. We didn't have the game by the way. The next story is titled, Old Granny Mistakes Me for a Gardener. A few weeks ago I was working the lawn in my new house. I had just moved in with my wife and we were really working hard to make the place homey. I was already finishing up the lawn when I saw an old granny slowly walking towards me. I turned off my lawn trimmer so I could say hello and not have anything fly towards her. When she came up she kindly asked me, excuse me, how much do you charge per lawn? I looked at her a bit confused, but after remembering my attire, I had a hat, some gloves and safety glasses on, and since I was new in the neighborhood I understood that she had mistaken me for a gardener. I looked at her and, and said, hello, how can I help you ma'am? She kindly told me that she wanted her lawn mowed, but she doesn't have much money as she lives alone and if I was willing to take 20 for the work. I looked at her place and saw that the lawn in question was incredibly out of control as if it wasn't mowed in months and since it was a small area, I told the kind granny. Don't worry ma'am, I will take care of it. The deed took me almost 20 minutes to finish mowing and an extra 10 to take the trimmings and clean the surrounding area. After I was done, she came out of her small house with a tall glass of water which I accepted gladly and proceeded to hand me the money. That is when I said, don't worry about that ma'am, I am not a gardener I am actually your new neighbor. I did because I wanted to not because of the money. She immediately apologized for the confusion and told me she was ashamed to ask me something like that. I told her to not worry about that and that it was something I did out of the bottom of my heart and if the she needed help with her lawn to please call me again. She began to cry and thank me profoundly and began to tell me her story. Turns out that she was living alone for a while and that her husband died a few months ago and she didn't have anyone to help her as all her children were living in the US. After the tale she thanked me again and we went our separate ways. Now, every time I help her with her lawn she always gives me a bag of fruit from her mango trees or banana trees and a tall glass of water. The next story is titled Wine and Illegal Parking. So yesterday I popped into one of the wine tasting rooms across the street from my work. For clarity, I do work in a restaurant, but I don't have anything to do with the wine cellar. The manager of the cellar is Nicole, and she's held a couple of staff parties at my restaurant. We featured some wine from them, and we have a good relationship. Read into that, I hook her up when she comes to see me, and she gives me free wine. So I've stopped in here, it's after work, I'm wearing jeans, a clean t-shirt I just changed into and a hat that clearly says, OP restaurant on it. I'm standing at their counter with a couple empty glasses in front of me, waiting for some red juice to fall into them. A guy walks in the front door with his wife and a teenager in tow. He walks right up to me and says, you, watch my car. I'm like what, who and what the? It kind of took me off guard, I didn't know what he even meant. Watch your car? Huh. 
So, I say sorry, I'm not sure if you think I'm, but he puffs up his chest and cuts me off with, watch my car, it's not that hard. Right there. And he points out the front door. His car is in a spot marked as 15 minute parking only. Oh, okay. I get what you mean now. I understand that you're an entitled ass who thinks some hourly employee should make sure you don't get a ticket or towed. Cool, duck you. On it, chief, I tell him. He proceeds up to the counter and orders a flight six wine tastings total, poured one at a time into the same glass. He and his wife share this as his kid looks bored as hell on his phone. Nicole gives me some wine and rolls her eyes in the general direction of the guy. She saw the whole thing. I sip the wine to release and taste a few more. Half hour later, I watch the security car pull up outside. The driver is Walter, small tourist town. Everyone knows everyone, dedicated security, parking ticket aficionado. I slip outside the door real quick as Walter is eyeing the guy's car. I make eye contact, point at the car, and tap my wrist like I'm wearing a watch. Walter smiles, nods, and issues a ticket from his mechanical thingy, puts it on the windshield. I go back in, down the last of my glass, and tell Nicole to have a great night loudly. The guy looks at me and says, where are you going? I said, home. I'd work here, and left. Update. Walter later told me that dude's car got towed, which made me even more happy. The next story is titled No, I'm not your coworker. I have been a long time, but today it finally happened to me. I went out today to do some early Christmas shopping. I know it's not even Thanksgiving yet, but I love Christmas. I went to an outdoor store that was having a sale on cozy socks I thought my mother-in-law might like. I was browsing all the different patterns when this interaction happened. For simplicity's sake I'll be me, the store manager will be SM. SM, hello, can I help you find anything? Me? No thank you, I'm just browsing. SM, do you need me to bring more socks out from the back? Me? No that's alright, I'm fine with what I have. SM, well, the shelves won't be very stocked, with just those few pairs. Me what? SM, aren't you stocking these shelves? You really shouldn't be shopping while you're working. Me? Looks down at green sweater and jeans I'm wearing that look nothing like the blue uniform, no I don't work here. SM, if you don't work here then why are you stocking these shelves? Me? I'm not, I'm shopping. This circular argument went on for another few minutes until I finally walked away. I'm not sure he ever got that I didn't work for him. How can a manager not know his own employees? The next story is titled, I don't work here, I'm the bride. My husband and I recently celebrated our 28th wedding anniversary and we're looking through our old photos and one reminded me of this encounter, hope you like it. We had a small wedding and a big evening reception for extended family and friends at a local hotel. As a thank you for my mother and newly minted mother-in-law, we bought them bouquets and the staff hid them in the bar stock room until we were ready for them. I got changed out of my dress and into something I could have fun in after the traditional first dance and dancing with my dad. Things were going well I met a lot of new family members, the time came to get the flowers, the staff were busy, but said I could walk behind the bar and get them myself. As I was headed to the store room, a man shouted, excuse me. I thought this was for the bar staff because I don't work here, man. Where do you think you are going? Me. Oh, to get the flowers. Man. Well, I can wait, I want. Stuff I can't remember. Me. Oh, sorry, I can't do that. I, man. Why can't you just serve me? I've been here for ages. Me. I don't work here, I'm the bride, and you are. Man went quiet and red in the face. Turns out he worked in the same place as my husband and had tagged along with a group who actually were invited. But despite that, it was a wonderful day and we can still laugh together after 28 years. The next story is titled Karen. Do you need a friend? This is what I get for going to the store instead of ordering groceries to be delivered. So with the corona stuff going on, I've been dutifully staying in my apartment, like a decent human being, and limiting any time I spend outside. Unfortunately, this has been hell on my partner's mental health and the depression is real. So I decided, screw it. We're both food boys and he likes cookies. There's a giant the next block over. So I get dressed, put on my sweet Disney mask, go on Etsy, the designs are wonderful, and head out to get my partner some cookies. Now for reference, my style is hobo chic. So sweats, sneaks, graphic tee, and a hoodie. Keep that in mind. I go into giant and head for the cookie aisle. I'm considering if I want to do Oreos or if I want to be fancy and get Pepperidge Farm. These are the important questions of life. 
when an older woman who is very short asks if I can grab something for her off the top shelf. Of course I say yes because she was nice enough to ask. I'm a simple guy. I hand her the item and go back to my contemplation. As I decide to get them both, I hear the hem hem. I've worked retail and I've worked food service, so I know the sound of a wild Karen when I hear one. Me? What's up? Karen? What's up? Is that how you treat? I have zero in the way of spoons and even less patience. Me, ma'am, ma'am, I'm gonna need you to look at me and try that line of thinking again. Karen, who the duck? Me, hey, 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 ah, uh, let me tell you what we're not gonna do. I need you to woo, woo, woo and chill, I know you know better. Karen still looks mad, but doesn't say anything. Me, now I can help you find an employee if you want, but what you will not do is yell at me. I am only here to get cookies. I point at my stomach, I'm a thick boy. Me? Not that I need them. Karen cracks a small smile. Gotcha. Me. But at this point, I'm committed to this. I didn't choose thick life, it chose me. Karen starts to crack and laughs a little before all of a sudden starting to tear up. I'm 6 FT, 300 pounds in black. A crying Karen is a bit detrimental to my continued freedom. Me? Um, you okay? Karen, yeah. It's just that this is the first time I've laughed in a while. My husband is in the hospital. Me, the virus? Karen, yeah. Me, I'm not sure if it means much coming from some cookie guy, but I hope he recovers. Karen smiled and walked away. While she didn't apologize for popping off, I'm glad it didn't escalate further. Her husband's condition doesn't excuse what I'm sure would have been an awful tirade but it does serve as a reminder that crap is bad for everyone. The next story is titled Lady is Entitled to My Assistance. Warning, blood. Hospital food isn't crunchy. For whatever reason, none of it has a good, satisfying crunch. The crunchiest thing they seem to have is raisin bran, and that just doesn't do the trick. And after a week of being held captive by toots and wires, I was ready for food that was actually satisfying to chew. Finally discharged, I stopped off at Humongo Chain Grocery Store for my craving. Don't judge, but all I wanted was a bowl of corn checks and freezing, ice-cold milk. Hand basket containing my crunchy treat, I was rifling through the milk section, looking for the coldest jug with the latest expiration date they had. Yes, at most you can get milk that is only two days fresher than the jugs at the front, but I just got out of the hospital so I was feeling really picky. When she lit up my life in exactly the same way that a swarm of locusts blots out the sun. She was wearing some kind of dark, expensive-looking pants and a white, white, dazzling white, over-boraxed silk blouse with draping folds that just screamed, I have more money than you. I was bending over, head stuck in the cooler, and I could hear her talking about how we were out of some organic, grass-fed, free-range, no-hormone, royal cows only that have never seen a poor person milk. I think this stuff sells for around $1.12 slash gallon, and big grocery store, keeps all of that stuff in their pretentious section where freezers are filled with $10 microwave dinners, $6 designer chips, and tiny cans of artisanal Sprint water carbonated with mermaid farts. At any rate, I'm not in that section. I don't work there. I don't care about her so I ignore her. Big mistake. On her part. Suddenly, I have a snake hissing in my ear the words, you will look at me when I am talking to you, and my wrist is grabbed and pulled. Now, I had just been released from a week at the hospital where I was on, among other things, a heparin drip, blood thinner, constantly fed through an unthor, too, which had been taped to my wrist, exactly where she was now grabbing me. The tube had been taped down, and while I ripped off the bandages before I left the hospital room, there was still some significant sticky tape dunk in the area. Whatever that stuff is, it usually takes three showers and a bottle of alcohol to get rid of all of the sticky. What else might stick to tape residue? How about idiot fingers? She grabbed my wrist and yanked my arm up, but her fingers happened to stick to the skin a bit, resulting in two things, the sensation for her of getting some pine sap on her skin, and my skin being twisted far more than she expected, not that she would have cared anyway. The twisting and pulling of the skin released a bit of blood from the Roman foresight. Just a couple of drops, not really a big deal, but enough so that when she felt the sticky gunk on her fingers, she instinctively wiped her hand on her sleeve leaving a small trail of blood on that field of spotless white. You know how some people pass out at the sight of blood? I mean, I don't, but she sure did. She dropped like her facade of friendliness if her triple whipped iced spiced happy, no fat soy maca at Starbucks, isn't served on a silver tray balanced on the back of a unicorn. 
and that's when the staff started to run up. Typical shouts of what happened, call and ambulance followed, with M Lady regaining consciousness within a minute or so and starting to scream about how I, the store employee, had thrown blood on her, clawing at her blouse and going into absolute hysterics. Store security had arrived and was glaring at me menacingly demanding to know what had happened. Fortunately, I had an ace just a few inches up my sleeve. An ace which I played as I said, this lady grabbed me and it really hurt. Thing about heparin is that it is the only drug that can go into that specific Roman 4 site. I needed many other Roman 4s in the hospital, so I had another Roman 4 site just a few inches up my arm where they had been injecting all kinds of other things and that side looked ugly. A bruise the size of a silver dollar, brown and yellow and green, as if a parrot had binged on tricks and lucky charms, then threw up in the ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. Previously hidden under my sleeve, I made sure it wasn't hidden now, and displayed that bruise of honor like a middle-aged man, displays a trophy yoga instructor in his convertible. She grabbed my arm because I wasn't paying attention to her and yanked. She left this bruise and it really hurts. That coupled with the hospital armband I hadn't yet cut from my wrist seemed to be all that I needed to turn the tide of opinion to my favor. I gave a statement to the police who had eventually arrived, told them I wanted to press charges, got my milk, and headed for the door. A few days later I received a call from a detective or a prosecutor or somebody, and they told me that they had come to a plea agreement of some kind fairly quickly, and if I wanted to write out a victim impact statement to have it in within a week. I told them that as long as something went on to her record I was fine. The crunch was indeed satisfying. The next story is titled I Guess I Work Here Now. A few years back I was at my local pub for a couple of beers to watch my mate's band. I had just got off work so I was suited and booted. I was sat at the end of the bar and the place is heaving busy. A drunk old muppet, Dom, sick of waiting at the bar smacks me in the shoulder and shouts, I'm trying to get a ducking pint here. Get off your arse and serve me. I said, mate, I'm having a drink. I don't work here. Dom, yes you do. I've seen you behind the bar. Me, matey mate, but that was about 10 years ago. He grumbled something incoherent and ducked off for a bit. Barmaid, you used to work here. It's mental, but could you give us a hand? Two staff have rung in sick and I'm rushed off my feet. I can pay you in beer. Me at the offer of free beer. Yeah, no problem, hun. I jump behind the bar and start serving. DOM comes back up, see I told you you work here, I'll have you fired. Now, I want a ducking drink. Me, glances at barmaid and raise eyebrows, she grins and nods. Me, smiling your barred mate, now duck off. Free drinks all night, PS20 and tips, and a raging justice boner. The next story is titled Woman Berates Me at 3am for not doing my job. So I was working at a supermarket doing nightfill stocking shelves after hours. One night we ran super late as we were short-staffed. I didn't finish till about 2.30 am. After I left the only place open for food was a 24-7 fuel station across the road that had a subway. So I said hi to the staff, I was a regular, and got my sub and put in my headphones while I ate. I was just kinda zoning out as I had just finished a 9HR shift so I was a little slow. A woman came in and went up to the fuel counter. The server was not there. 3 a.m. they have a bunch of other jobs to do out back, and they have a buzzer on the counter. So she's obviously seen me and moves closer. I'm oblivious listening to my audiobook. I look up when she's towering over me, blaring. She says something. I take my headphones out. Me? Sorry. Her? I don't mean to interrupt you. Me? Do okay? Now she's blaring full force. Her? I need you to do your job. I don't care if you're on break. Me? Do what? still foggy. Her, I need you to get off your ass and do your job, she screams. Finally, I get what's going on. I lean back and point to my shirt logo. Me, I don't work here, I'm from the supermarket across the road. Her, don't give me that bullcrap. I'm in a hurry now, do your job. By now the server has come back to check on the noise. Server, hey my name, everything okay? Me, ask her. She does an actual double take. She goes a bit red, but rallies herself and glares at me again. She pays for her stuff and then in a loud as hell stage whisper says, what's he doing here at this time of night? Suspicious, if you ask me. Then she leaves. The server shakes his head and we laugh it off. But the best part is a few weeks later. Same scenario at the same petrol place. I'm eating but more alert. 
She comes in, sees me eating and goes red. Me. Hey server, that crazy woman is back. I then nod at her. Me. Can I help you with anything ma'am? I don't work here but I know how upset you get with the truth so maybe I can pretend. Do some roleplay. If that would help. The server comes out, she buys some gum and leaves never saying a word, her face bright red. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.